Hi, thanks for joining us today in the Thundering Legion, and I'm your host, Christine Ross. Today on the Thundering Legion, we're going to talk about vitamin D and heart health. I'm not a medical doctor, and I'm not licensed to diagnose or prescribe. The information on this video is for educational purposes only. The Johns Hopkins Medicine website says that medical research shows an increasing acceptance that vitamin D is necessary for heart health. Vitamin D is produced in the skin by its exposure to sunlight. Since most of us spend most of our day indoors, even if you live in Miami, Florida, you can still develop a deficiency of vitamin D. That's why it's important to take a vitamin D supplement if you can't spend time outdoors each day. Although fish and some vitamin D fortified milk does supply vitamin D, it is not enough to maintain your health. The VitaminDCouncil.com website says that living in higher elevations in the mountains increases your exposure to ultraviolet light. Living closer to the equator also causes increased exposure to ultraviolet light. The VitaminDCouncil.com website says that those who live in higher elevations and those who live closer to the equator have lower rates of heart disease than those in the north. The Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center says on its website that there is a relation between vitamin D deficiency and cancer. To prevent cancer, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and maintain good bone health, it's important to keep your vitamin D levels up. Dr. Stephen Sinatra quotes a Danish study on heart disease on his website drsinatra.com. The less vitamin D a person has in their blood supply, the more likely it is that they will have heart disease, according to the study. Hippocrates, the father of Western medicine, advised moderation in all things. Dr. Sinatra's views on vitamin D are an example of that. Dr. Sinatra says on his website that while we all need vitamin D, too much of a good thing is not a good thing. That's why he suggests taking between 1,000 and 3,000 international units of vitamin D per day. Like Dr. Joseph Mercola on Mercola.com, Dr. Sinatra advises having your vitamin D levels checked once a year. You can either ask your doctor to order a vitamin D test for you, or you can order a vitamin D test yourself online. By now you might be wondering how the Thundering Legion podcast got its name. The Thundering Legion is named after the real Thundering Legion, which was the 12th Legion of the Roman army. In 174 AD, the, the 12th Legion of the Roman army was under attack by a Germanic tribe. They were also dying of thirst. The Catholics in their midst knelt down and prayed to God to save them. It is a matter of historical record that God answered their prayers immediately by sending them rain to slake their thirst, and the storm itself became like a living thing. After that, the Emperor Marcus Aurelius named the 12th Legion the Thundering Legion, and that's how my podcast got its name. Another true story of the power of group prayer can be found in Austria after World War II. The communists had invaded Austria. The Austrians were helpless to defend themselves because they had no guns. The communists turned Austria into a one large concentration camp. The Austrians prayed to God, they prayed the rosary, and asked God to save their country. They prayed by themselves and in processions, and in 1955, the communists left Austria. There are some who have said that the United States itself is becoming increasingly communist. That's why I urge you to pray the rosary every day and that God will save America. Until next week, keep praying the rosary. Goodbye now.